I'm poached. Radio said the heat wave was due to break. The weatherman here probably forecast by the pain in his bunion. Nina, I wish you'd quit acting as if I did this just to annoy you. I truly didn't plan to break my leg. Of course not, dear. It was all my fault. If I'd had a grain of sense, I'd have clapped you in a straitjacket the minute you suggested this insane trip. This so-called second honeymoon. Oh, you mustn't reproach yourself. I think you've been just as unpleasant about it all as a woman could be and not draw blood. <laughs> we did prove one thing, though, didn't we? Either you or that fool plow horse needs a little bit more practice at jumping fences. Well, the next time I break my leg, I'll try and choose a swankier spot than Aunt Sophie's farm. I'd appreciate it. Some place where I don't have to play sunbonnet sue for weeks. Want your pillow padded or your handheld or anything? Don't bother. I'm all right. Just trying to be a dutiful wife. Trying to be a what? Just a figure of speech, dear. Don't kick it around. Anyway, Aunt Sophie thinks I'm the most dedicated nurse since Nightingale. Aunt Sophie's always been fond of you. Aunt Sophie would have a go at liking your wife if you dragged in typhoid Mary. I'm sure she'd much rather you'd have married some nice, sweet soul who taps and puts up watermelon pickle. Oh, nonsense. Can I come in? Oh, come in, Aunt Sophie. That you might like for my tea. It's all swell. You must be awash with tea. You've had a gallon of it today. <laughs> oh, such awful weather for you to have to stay in bed. If I'd had any time to think you could have had my room. Gets the breeze. Oh, by the way, Al Newsom called up this afternoon. He wants to see you real soon. So I told him to stop by any time. You remember him, don't you, dear? Al, oh, sure. How is he? Oh, same as always. Still has his dairy. Nothing much changes around here, does it? Not much, I guess. Seems to me everything's about the same as it was when I came here abroad 40 years ago. 40 years? 40 years this June. <laughs> How time flies. Oh, I'm afraid it's not very exciting here for you, Nina. Well, Nina was just as excited as I when we decided to break up our trip and come by and see you. Weren't you, dear? Yes, I love the idea. When I think of how your lovely vacation has been ruined, I could just cry. But I must say, I can't think of anything that could give me more pleasure than having you two children paying me such a nice visit. I've been trying to get back here for a long time. Haven't I, Nina? Yes, he's forever talking about this farm. His Uncle Bert and I used to love to have him come for a visit. Do you still like strawberries, Carl? I love them. Well, I'll make us a shortcake tonight. I've got a good 20 quarts in the freezer. You know, when you were a little shaver, your Uncle Bert and I used to say we did believe you could eat your weight in strawberries. <laughs> now you let me know if I can do anything. I don't think you'll have to bother. I uh, have such a sweet little nurse. I know. You should have been a nurse, Nina, dear. Probably as sweet, friendly, gentle a little nurse as a man could find for miles around. I shouldn't be at all surprised. Just can't quite manage to be a good sport about it, can you? Carl, dear, just because you've been as close to the earth as an artichoke ever since you were a little shaver, don't expect me to go around organizing quilting bees. I should have learned long ago not to expect you to do one thing you didn't want to do, ever. Well, right now, I don't want to fight. It's far too hot. So? Well, here's the local news. Anything in it? Let's see. Oh, yes, the weather's supposed to break. And the governor is going to address the county grange this week. Isn't that nice? Want to read it? No, thanks. Just bring me my tea. Well, I think I'll just toddle downstairs and see if I can help Aunt Sophie. I even bore you on this forsaken farm, don't I? Isn't that a childish way to spend your time, lying in that bed, thinking up unpleasant cracks? Sorry. Nina. How many times, how many thousands of times has one of us had to say he was sorry? Grains of sand, I guess. Nina. Come here a minute. You know, being married to you is more important to me than anything else in the world. Yet I'm losing you. Slowly, but surely. Just like bleeding to death. Oh, Carl. I thought if we could get away by ourselves, if we took this little trip, maybe we could get our bearings again. Well, you can see what a howling success that idea was. If things go on this way, one day there just won't be a marriage. 
Uh, listen, Carl, can't we discuss this when we get home? In your entire safe, sheltered life, have you ever faced anything really unpleasant? Anything as unpleasant, say, as the fact that your marriage is cracking up simply because you and your husband no longer seem important to each other? It's much too hot to discuss this. It's always something, isn't it? It's too hot, you're too tired, or it's beginning to bore you. Oh, never mind. Look, do me a favor, will you? Try and get a nap, please. Well, here I go again, saying I'm sorry. <laughs> Who knows? It may all work out tremendously. We may finish up so cozily married that they'll put us on a postage stamp. Thank you. Sure is a shame the way they spoil your vacation. Oh, but you're spending your holiday here on the farm, aren't you? Yeah, but I like it here. <laughs> the change in that boy is astounding. I wish you could have seen how pale and thin he was when he first came here from the Air Force Hospital. Well, he certainly made a beautiful recovery. You know, Joe tells me the Air Force kept him too busy to do anything but fly their old airplanes. And that uniform, he must have had the female population swooning. You aren't happy, are you, Nina? Why? Well, I don't know why, dear. I do know that when you and Carl were first married, the way you looked at one another lighted up the sky. Now... Please, Aunt Sophie, please. You know... The trouble with young people nowadays is that they just don't work at loving one another. Must you work at loving someone? Indeed, you must. Some women have too easy a life. They just don't realize that... Sorry. Oh, Joe, why don't you rest for a little while? Right. It's too hot for you to be running around all the time. Would you like some iced tea? Uh, no, thank you, Aunt Sophie. I think I'll just read the paper for a while. Hey, I see they haven't caught that guy that uh, murdered the jeweler and walked off with a diamond necklace. <laughs> I doubt if the local police here could find the corner grocery store, let alone a murderer. Yeah, the lead they had on the necklace turned out to be a big nothing. <laughs> Don't you just know that sheriff was disappointed? He thought he finally had himself a clue. <laughs> you mustn't joke about it. I hope he's caught and punished. But I hope they do it a long ways away. We're not used to violence in this town. I wonder if Carl needs anything. Well, I think he's all right, dear. He's probably taking a nap. Oh, this blasted heat. Storm tonight. Certainly hope so. No, Jim, I won't have the girls staying alone. They're such little things. All right, Jim, nine o'clock. I'll be ready. Jim Rogers is taking Grace to the hospital. He has to have someone stay with these little girls tonight. A neighbor? Yes, he lives down the road a piece. Oh, I hate leaving you. Don't worry, dear, we'll be just fine. Well, we'll have an early supper, if you don't mind. No, of course not. Oh. Now, you're sure you're going to be all right? Of course, dear. I may not look it, but I am capable of making breakfast for the boys. Well, there's Jim. You better hurry, Aunt Sophie. The storm will be here any minute. I'll be back first thing in the morning. All right. I think Aunt Sophie was going to Peru. From the sound the car made, I doubt if she'll get to the next farm. Here you are. Thanks.
I think I'll read for a while and then turn in. That's as good an idea as any. Anything I can do for Mr. Barton? No, thanks. I'll give him a sedative so he can sleep. Good night, Miss Barton. Good night, Joe. Someone on the roof outside our window. They were trying to get in. I know. I'd fallen asleep in the chair out there. Somebody woke me up. I went outside, but there's nobody there. I'll check him back. No, please, don't leave us. Carl's help. Please call the police, will you? without saying goodbye to you. If I hadn't wakened you while I was trying to get your dear husband's money, I'd have been in the next county by now. I'm glad you woke up. No, listen, Joe. Don't be silly. Don't run away, Mrs. Barton. I'm crazy about you. You know that, don't you? I won't hurt you. What's the matter with you, Joe? You had a couple of drinks or something? You like me, too, don't you? You know you like me. We'll go away together. Sure I like you, Joe. Sure I... But I'm not serious. I... I like lots of people. Like that perfect gentleman upstairs? Oh, I've watched him stalking around this house, acting as if he owned you and the whole world besides. He doesn't deserve a lovely wife like you, Mrs. Barton. He ought to be smacked around a little bit. You think I ought to smack him around a little bit, Mrs. Barton? How'd, how'd you like to know that just for once, everything doesn't depend on his whim? Oh, stop it, Joe. He's never harmed you. Don't make any trouble. Well, no, there won't be any trouble, because we won't be here. In the bottom of dear Aunt Sophie's bureau, there's almost $300 cash. And there's him, conveniently available in the guest room. Uh, uh, Joe, we have very little cash with us. I know, but you do have traveler's checks. I saw them. 
And Mr. Barton will sign them. I promise you when I get through with them, Mr. Barton will be happy to sign them. Joe! They'll never cash those checks for you, you know. They have to see you sign them. See, we'll stop at a very small town. We'll be so apologetic. We'll hate ourselves for being so stupid as to have signed them all. We'll ask them just this once to make an exception. What do you bet they get cashed? Yeah, and if we ever need any more money, they're your jewels. You do have jewels, don't you? Oh, sure. Sure, lots of them. Joe, listen, I have an idea. Why don't I go upstairs now? Mm. Get the car keys and the jewelry and the checks. Bring them down here to you. Good. After all, it's only money to Mr. Barton. Sure. And what can he do to stop you? Yeah, he'll be civilized about it. I'll see to it. Joe, why would you want to harm him, Joe? He's only been friends with you. You don't condescend to your friends. He even tried to tip me the day I helped him with the horse. He was just trying to show his appreciation. I think Mr. Barton needs manners. I don't like people who look down their nose at me. <sighs> What's the matter with you? Are you mad? Because I go after what I want. How about that? <sighs> Took my breath away. Come on, let's sit down. Didn't the Air Force object to this little habit of yours of taking whatever you wanted? I wasn't ever in the Air Force. I wasn't in the hospital either. I did three years, but not in the service. Uh, you must have had a very interesting life, Joe. Tell me more about yourself. Have a lot of fun. It's nice taking what you want, making people do what you say. We can leave tonight. Well, I, I'd have to think it over, Joe. If I do go with you, will you promise me you won't hurt Carl? I don't have to make bargains. What good would it do to hurt him? This way we can leave together without it being a crime. There won't be any trouble. Carl won't press charges. We just go. Yes. Won't it put his nose out of joint? Oh, brother. Barton offers me a tip. And I end up with his money, his car, and his wife. Now, Joe, you promise you won't hurt him, will you? Stop worrying about him. Listen, I got something that'll make you forget all about him. Come on. you like your present. Now! I really... I really do love it, Joe. I bet he never gave you anything like that, did he? Well, did he? No, nothing like I'll this. I'll bet he didn't. No. No. He could maybe walk into a fancy store and lay down his money and buy it. But that doesn't mean anything, does it? It doesn't call for nerves. It's not like taking what you want. Paying for it. Anybody can do that. But do you know what I had to go through to get that? No, but I can guess, Joe. Hey. Yeah, I got an idea. Let's go show off your present. What do you mean? Let's take it upstairs and show Barton. Let's show him he isn't the only man in the world can give things. Come on, let's throw it in a silly face. Come on! Joe! I just remembered something. I do have to pack, don't I? Yeah? Well, I'll need my big suitcase. Would you get it for me? Well, sure. Where is it? Well, it's right here in the closet. I'm on the top shelf. You know, I get a kick out of, out of watching Barton's face when he's watching you back. <laughs> hey, where is it? I don't see it. Well, it 
must be way at the back, Joe, on the top shelf. I got a gun pointed at the door. All right. The second you come out of there, I'll blow you to smithereens. You best sit back there and wait till the other boys get here. You're lying. All right, you just come out of there and see what happens. I got a shotgun, Joe, and I can make a mighty big hole in that door. You run along upstairs, Miss Barton. It's all right now. Something wrong? No. Just wanted to be me. 